All right, guys, welcome back to take two of the Slow Fishing Sea Bones podcast because the audio on the first one was terrible and we do not want you guys to have to sit through something like that. No, it was uh, it was 100% kicker noise. So, yeah, you don't want to do that. No. It's already, you listen to it enough as you're trolling. Oh, hey, you listen to it enough as you're trolling. You don't want to have to listen to it while you're listening to a podcast. Exactly. So what's the what's the deal with this podcast? What are we doing? The Slow Fishing Podcast is us just having a bit of a gab while we're out here. Uh, you know, talking about techniques, talking about what we're doing, how we're fishing, some areas, some spots that we're fishing, talking about the Sea Bums channel, yep. what we're all about, what we're doing here, where we're from, that kind of thing. While we're and, actively fishing. Yeah. We're actively fishing right now. We had a bit of a slow day, but we did get into two Chinook three. salmon. Three Chinook salmon. We got two to the boat and you lost one. So that's three. There you go. Yeah. So there's that. Um, but yeah, we've already and gone. And we found a hatchery. And we finally found a hatchery. After how many? Se seven wilds we found yeah. in the last week and a half. Yep. And we finally found the one hatchery, but it was a little bit short. Yeah. Uh, so we had to throw that one back too. It wasn't quite that 62 centimeters, but uh, yep. you know, it is what it is. Yep. We are, so yeah, we're actively trolling for salmon right now. We're in the Gulf Islands, uh, Tyler's home waters. I've been up here a uh, better part of two weeks now. So two weeks and change. Uh, I slept on this on the US side, San Juan Island. So I camped over there for four nights. What do you think, Rivy? <laughs> kayak, huh? Get the kayak in for ice. Stayed in Bellingham for a week. It's official. We are in. Canadian waters and then popped over here and now I've been here for a week tomorrow I go back to the states back to my hometown uh, and then fishing at home yeah. but yeah we this is what we do we get together once every couple months and we shoot videos and we fish together and we just have a uh, a wicked time a wicked time <laughs> honestly it's we, just a lot of fun it's it's totally fun and we've had you know you've seen some of our long form videos that's kind of what we're focusing on for sea bums is showcasing our local areas, shooting us fishing. And uh, we love the beauty of all of this. And we just want to share it with everybody. And that's part of it is just trying to capture what we see. You know, Donovan and I, we haven't been fishing since we were super young. We both started in around 2007. Um, so, you know, we've been fishing for a good 15 odd years now. And, uh, you know, we're still learning every single day uh, different techniques uh, you know even just right now we weren't catching fish and and I had the idea to shorten up the length between the cannonball and the flasher by about 10 feet and all of a sudden we had three fish on so yeah. that was instantly. cool instantly. yeah it was crazy yeah like they just it some of these days they just want something we've talked about this but the variables that go into salmon fishing are there's so many variables and you can adjust so many things right like if you're fishing and you see marks on the screen but you're not getting bit, it's time to start trying new things, try new things. And what Tyler did was he shortened that, that length of action between basically where you clip in your fishing line to where the downrigger ball is. And then that just makes that gear behind the boat work a lot more. And uh, seems seem to like it. Yeah! Uh, wild? wild trolling back it's it's early summer now so it's what like 8 p.m something like yeah, that yeah something like that 8 15 doing the night bite so and it's raining we're calling it a night after this so we're just heading in having a bit of a gab and then um and then that's it yeah, i think hopefully absolutely. we catch one as we're going but we'll 100%. see it would, would be nice to get uh, get one hatchery fish that we could actually keep yeah um we also got into a link cod. whoa wait a minute we got into a link cod while trolling at like 70 feet too, which was yeah. weird because it was like 130 on the And it wasn't even super rate. rocky either, which is like, it's the funniest part about link cod. Yeah. It'll just be random spots and hey, got one. That's cool. Oh, there's a prawn trap. Cool, man. Prawn but, traps and like, what is this? Well, 225. It looks like we're shallow, but we're not. But we're not, yeah. yeah. Heading back tomorrow. It's still link cod season where I am, so I'll be focusing on that a bit. And Tyler, I'm sure, will be doing some solo missions up here, but... I made several videos in the islands, just so, solo missions, camp cooks, all of that. So stay tuned for all that stuff. It's uh, it'll be fun to watch. Sweet, for sure. absolutely. Oh, you got some shit coming oh, hey, here. Oh, there we go. Whoa, get around it. Oh, bunch of junk. Bunch of junk in the water. It happens. Yeah. Got to pay attention. 
Yeah, thanks even, for seeing e- that. Even during the slow fishing podcast, we got to pay attention. You well, never know what's going to happen. It's nice if you're actually fishing and you're not just dragging, you know, a bunch of junk around. Well, so. that's it. Sea bums is, I mean, at the very high level, it's highlighting uh, fishing opportunities on Vancouver Island and Washington. I live in Washington. Tyler lives on Vancouver Island. We share fisheries pretty much. Our fish are very similar. So our salmon come up to Canada, their salmon come down to us and we're fishing the same fish. You know, there's uh, there's a lot of opportunity, cross-border opportunity there and we're buddies. So we try and fish together as much as we can. And for us, sea bums is us getting together and shooting content surrounding us fishing both fisheries, the US fishery, the Canadian fishery. Yep. Um, and you saw some videos hopefully of us fishing the Chum Derby back in October of last year. That was a really fun that experience. That was a blast. We We're had a do great that time, dude. Yeah, that was super fun. And, you know, not just because the fishing was super hot, because it was. It was. We had 11 fish in two days, 11 salmon in two days. So we came back with like 80 pounds of salmon, which is just which outrageous. Is awesome. Chum you know? salmon. And most people out there are like, oh, chum salmon, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But first off, we ate a fresh one at the at the airbnb that night and it was delicious excellent and then we smoked a whole bunch of it and yeah. it was fantastic dude it was so good so you know don't dog the doggies you know don't they're pretty delicious the you know you, you brine them up good and you smoke them and, and they were fantastic and they yeah. were just an absolute blast to battle oh dude they were so so fun. fun and i look forward to coho season every year in the sound because you've got you know upwards of like 10 to 15 pound coho that comes through there. That's a really good fish, really good coho. And they Absolutely. fight like crazy, but chum, the action's extremely hot. And the crazy part about Campbell River where we were is you keep four per person. Yeah. And they're all 10 pounds plus. Which is sweet. Which is like fighting some of the best coho in the sound every time. And chum are known for being some of the best fighting salmon pound for pound, yep. which is great. For, we were fishing four rods. We were fishing four rods on a tiny we had, boat. We had a triple header at one point that was yeah. just nuts. I had two rods in my hand. Donald's got a rod on. We we're like, holy cow, this is going just off. Yeah. That's the kind of fishing every fisherman hopes for. And they're, yeah. they're far and few between for every fisherman. I mean, not every day is like that. Hence why we're here doing the slow fishing podcast right now. You know, we got a couple, but it's been a bit of a slow night. Yep. And, uh, you just have to enjoy being out here. I mean, it's a little overcast, it's a bit foggy, a little bit misty and rainy, but just being out here is like, this is like our sanctuary, right? Oh, I mean, you dude. were talking about it earlier, about yep. you know, coming up on the San Juans and, and, and having to work a little bit while yep. you were on the boat and stuff. And yep. it's kind of hard to, you know, mesh those two things together because when you're out on the boat, you just want to be on the boat doing your thing, being, in your, being in your place, right? Yeah, 100%. That's how I feel. I was up here for two weeks, and my whole plan, I got Starlink on the boat, and I've got a power station. I've got a solar panel up top on the roof here. So I'm able to hunker down, anchor up, and work from this remotely anywhere in the world, which is amazing. However, the problem is when the islands are your getaway, if you're sitting down and the work I do is super focus intense, I have to focus... Uh, and be creative, it's really tough to do that on a boat. And if you're bringing your work to your getaway, your happy for place. me, my happy place is the islands, San Juan Islands, Gulf Islands, Vancouver Island. If you're bringing your work to these places, suddenly you're tainting those getaways that you use to get away from work. And then you're kind of just, I feel like it's just tainting the spot and it makes it like I, I become jaded. You know what I mean? Like that feeling of like, oh, you know, now I'm working and I'm burnt out at the end of the day after working all day. So it was a good experiment. So there's always that opportunity now, uh, like you mentioned for us to go out, we can anchor up somewhere and make videos and edit our videos and yep. post them if we wanted to exactly. anywhere. We can head to some uh, more remote places uh, in the San Juans, uh, North Vancouver Island. We can head up Desolation Sound a little bit, maybe do a two night somewhere. Yep. Uh, you know, potentially moor up at some of these different lodges along the way while we're fishing. We have the option of mm-hmm. the Starlink there. So that adds to the whole, you know, experience of us being able to showcase more of what the fishery has while we can still upload footage and bring awesome content to you guys yep. in the channel. So 100%. Uh, some of the things that we that we struggle with out on the water as fishermen and and some of the things that we definitely don't want to have to deal with that we do deal with sometimes, which is, you know, 
if you're if you're dragging bottom, you're trying to get down into the basement, and you're in a bit of a rocky area, you can hook up cannonballs. You can yep. potentially hook up cannonballs to pots and that kind of thing, and that just becomes a bit of a gong show. And uh, and that's just part of learning the different areas where you fish. I mean, for the very first time for me anyway. I was down in Washington about a month and a half, two months ago, fishing with Donovan and, and his buddies. Yep. And they basically bottom drag to the point oh, where yeah. they're actually bouncing off the sandy bottom. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they might be fishing in 120 feet of water and they've got 160 feet out on their downriggers. Yeah, we're dragging bottom. We just don't yep. do that up here in Vancouver Island. The, the bottom is too rocky. You're going to hook up cannonballs. You know, they're fishing in an area where there's lots of candlefish that are coming up from the sand. So they're yep. actively Small trying lures. to to get those cannonballs to stir up the sand, stir up candlefish and that kind of thing. So yep. it was a totally new experience for me fishing that way. Um, and not something that I would normally do because I hate losing cannonballs. Yep. You know, I lost a cannonball about a week and a half ago uh, to a prawner that I thought I was, you know, 200 meters away from. Turns out his line was way on an angle and I ended up hooking his line with my cannonball and I had to cut the downrigger line and cut the ball. And I actually ended up hearing the ball hit the side of the commercial boat the captain had a bit of a yell but in any event it happens i'm thankful that the ball kind of did hook the pot because now there's no lead in the in the ocean i yeah, didn't leave a cannonball down there but Unless you know you toss it over you never it's know. frustrating but i mean yeah. you know captaining a boat and, and and being out here salmon fishing there's always things to think about you know we think about weather we think about tides yeah uh, we think about conditions that kind of thing and yep you know really for us even today you know, Donovan had to work earlier in the morning, so we were only able to come out for the night bite. We're hitting the flood tide right in the middle of the flood tide, so it's just ripping. Yep. And, uh, you know, the bite wasn't on that great until about half an hour ago. Mm -hmm. and, and it's uh, kind of slowed down again. It's kind of slowed down again. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. But tides is a huge thing that we definitely focus on when, yep. we're, when we're looking. Tides, wind, you know, rain, weather. Those yeah. are basically the three yeah, main the, things. I would, yeah, the main things for sure. I would say my number one that I'm checking every time I'm going salmon fishing, I check the tides. I'm always checking the tides. That makes such a huge difference. It's going to dictate uh, how you're able to fish effectively. It's going to dictate where the bait is. It's going to dictate where the fish are because that's where the bait is, right? So it, there's several factors and variables that go into salmon fishing. But if there's three things I'm thinking about, it's tides, it's weather yeah for sure it makes a difference overcast you get to change your colors based on what the sky is doing if it's super bright you may change up your gear change up your lures right and then speed speed is a huge, factor, is a huge factor because we troll for salmon you've got multiple options you can go jigging you can go cut plugging um you know you can spin herring whatever but you're we troll a lot of the time with artificials uh, especially this time of year, I troll with spoons almost exclusively unless I want to get crazy and throw on a herring or like an anchovy or something. But mostly I'm fishing hardware and that's it, yeah. right? But yeah, so trolling is a huge factor for me. Speed is is one of those things I'm always thinking about. So. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious our difference in fishing styles. You know, we were talking about this uh, in the first rendition of this podcast, you know, Donovan is very ADHD and likes to change gear, chase after fish, oh, yeah. move his rigger up and down, yep. do all these different things, which is cool because it works for him and he catches fish doing that. He figures out, he throws the kitchen sink at him, figures out what they're biting on and goes for it. Whereas me, I'm a little bit more patient. I, I kind of have my methods that I like. I have my lures that I like. I have my time of years where I know what works and what doesn't. And, you know, I kind of stick to one one area in the water column that I am seeing bait at that kind of thing. And I'll just kind of stick and stay and make it pay. And that really does work for me as well. Um, and case in point, got two fish today. So, yep. and I was really patient. I haven't changed any gear. Um, and it's just working for me. So, yep. and then I changed my gear. I was, what did I run today? I ran a spoon, hoochie spoon but I lost a spoon because I got hooked on a jelly or something. Yeah. So I lost, that was weird. That was weird. Yeah. Nice two face. My favorite one. Two Face, yeah. cookies and cream, Two Face. That's a good one. That was a good one. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd buy another one of those. But um, yeah, man. So yeah, lost one of those. I, I like switching up gear. I like trying different things. And if I see a bait ball on the screen, 100% I'm chasing it. There's no way I'm not chasing it. Yeah. If I'm seeing two arches on the screen, 
I'm going to chase it. That's, <laughs> that's mostly what I do. I just like to find where they are. And then when I get bit, that's where I start honing in my depth. I start circling around that area and figuring out how to get more fish in the boat. Yeah, 100%. Point. It so, works for you. So yeah. there you go. Everyone's got their own methods. You know, people like to make fun of each other for doing funny things. And I mean, go it's for just it. Part it. It's, it's, part just, yeah, it's just part of it. It's just part of it. making fun have, of other people. We have a good time and oh, yeah. we have a good laugh. And at the end of the day, you know, we're both out here just trying to catch fish and, yeah. and bring you guys some awesome content and showcase what's around. Yeah. Um, you know, and to that end, we hope you guys are enjoying the content that we are providing. We're trying to provide some educational content on our social medias to show you guys, you know, what we're using, how we're fishing, different techniques. Um, you know, like I said, we're also still learning some of the older techniques from back in the 70s and 80s. They do still work, but there's also some new age stuff out there that works oh, yeah. super well. I mean, Donovan's fishing with a flasher that has a little beam of, of light on it. And I'm just fishing a regular white flasher with glow. I use a little flashlight to enhance that glow. Um, yep. And it's just different styles of fishing and it's cool to see what works in the moments and, and to switch it up and change it up and see if you can fish, if I can fish Donovan style or he can fish mine and, you know, go from there. Yep. Um, and it's just cool to see the different fisheries, especially yep. like I was talking about in Washington. Like I've never done that where I'm bouncing off bottom yeah. and trying to stir up There's big difference. Fish. It's all, and I've, you know, rarely do I fish suspended unless I'm dealing with reef kind of stuff like this. You know, you you look at Vancouver Island, it's one big rock and you're dealing with rocks everywhere, reef everywhere, which is really cool. It's different than the sound. The sounds all glacial mud. So you can just go in there, pound sand and you'll be fine. You're, you're not going to lose a downrigger ball that way. So, yeah. All right, let's close this out. But before we do, what is your number one go-to salmon setup? My go-to is a uh, five or six inch Tomic plug. Yeah? Yeah. Summertime fish. Summertime Tomic fish. Plug. Tomic plugs. Fuck yeah, I love, yeah. Tomic plugs favorite. are fun, yeah. for sure. That's and a great way. Beyond that, I would say anchovy and a teaser head. And then yeah. after that, I would say spoons and hoochies. Perfect. Yeah, that's rad. Let's see, what do I do? I think, so I've got on mine, the Pro Troll lighted flasher that you're talking about, it's yeah. a green silver. That's my go-to flasher okay. for almost everything now, except for coho, I'll switch it up. But if I'm fishing Chinook, got that Pro Troll flasher. And then on the back end, on the business end, I've got either a kitchen sink or a cookies and cream spoon glow on the back. There and that's go. it, Kingfisher. That's usually what I'm running. So I like yeah, it. that's it. That's my go-to starting rig. And then if I don't get bit, I'm going through everything. Perfect. So, yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this podcast of the Slow Fishing Podcast. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out. Uh, go and check out our socials on Instagram and TikTok as well. Um, and if there's anything that you guys want to see more from us, please drop it down in the comments. We love to hear feedback from you guys. Uh, and we really just appreciate the support. We want to grow the channel to as big as we can uh, and showcase the West Coast fishery from Washington all the way to the North Island. So, yep, let's do it, brother. Yeah.